What is going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And the 2021 NFL Draft has came and gone and the Jacksonville Jaguars have solidified their 2021 NFL draft class. Now, the whole community seems to be pretty split on their deciding factors on how good the 2021 class is. And, you know, some people think the Jaguars reached in certain positions. Some people think that this is a really, really good class. Now, today, I'm not going to be giving out individual draft grades. I'm going to be giving my overview on the class as a whole. So it's going to be more of a 2021 draft recap. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Jacksonville Jaguars 2021 draft recap. Now let's start off by talking about the Jaguars' two first round selections. And those two first round selections were obviously Trevor Lawrence and everybody and their mom knew the Jacksonville Jaguars were going to select Trevor Lawrence. In fact, in Vegas, he was a 100,000, plus 100,000 odds to be the first overall pick. So, you had to bet, it was like, if you bet $100,000 that Trevor Lawrence was going to go number one overall, you would win $100. So that's crazy. So everybody knew Trevor Lawrence was going to be coming to Jacksonville, and that's a big get. The Jaguars get their franchise quarterback, and that is amazing. That's exciting, and everybody in the fan base should be ultra, super excited about that, and there's nothing more to report about that. A-plus on that pick if we were given out grades, and this was a grading video, but we're more, I guess, dissecting the picks here, but... Um, obviously that's the only way they could have gone, and the cool thing that, uh, they noticed on Twitter, um, they, they took the clock down to 9 minutes and 4 seconds, the 904, Jacksonville's area code. I thought that was really clever and, uh, really cool by the Jaguars organization. They've been doing a lot of, they've been doing a lot of cool things lately. I mean, the social media team, the team as a whole, they've been doing a lot of, a lot of cool things, I feel like, for the fans lately. So, um, you can't fault them there. But the second, the 25th overall selection was running back from Clemson, Trevor Lawrence's teammate, Travis Etienne. Now, this is where the fans start to divide. This is where the casuals and the diehards start to divide. And I'm not just talking amongst the fan base. I'm talking about, you know, NFL as a whole. Because you can see it amongst professional analysts as well. Like, in no way does the Jacksonville, dra did the, the Jacksonville Jaguars drafting ETN, does that mean James Robinson's out of the picture? Urban Meyer was quoted saying, we want to be a top eight rush attack in the NFL, which is awesome. And you should really be excited for that because that's going to be taking a lot of pressure off of your young quarterback. And that's a quarterback that can play as well. But the more pressure you can take off of Trevor Lawrence, the better. And you bring in a running back who, in my opinion, I thought was the best running back in this year's class, in my opinion. I thought he was better than Najee Harris, in my honest opinion. The Jaguars ended up selecting him. If you see in my reaction video to that, I uploaded that to YouTube as well. I was surprised. I was shocked. You know, I didn't think we were going to draft a running back. I thought eventually we would. But, I mean, I don't think the Jaguars reach right there. It's better than what the alternate pick would have been if Urban Meyer got his way and the guy he wanted fell. So Urban Meyer was quoted earlier or later on in the draft process saying a guy that he wanted uh, didn't fall to 25 and it broke his heart. And that was Kadarius Toney, wide receiver out of Florida. And I think the fan base would have been a lot more upset with that pick, and they should be. Because I think right now the wide receiver room as a whole is pretty solid. But you need depth at the running back position, do you not? Like, you look at it, like, look at all these star running backs that get hurt every year. I mean, Saquon Barkley, Ezekiel Elliott, Christian McCaffrey. I mean, if you play fantasy football, you know that it's hard to find durability in the running back position. And you look at teams that have been successful in the past, teams that, you know, make deep playoff runs, teams that, you know, go to Super Bowls. I mean, you look at Tom Brady's teams, I mean, they're always... I mean, James White, Deion Lewis, Danny Woodhead. I mean, they have all a mix of a lot of running backs, of a lot of talent. 
And the fact that the Jaguars were able to add a guy that Trevor Lawrence is familiar with and add a guy that is elusive, a guy that is exciting, and a guy that is going to add a lot of you know, versatility to the offense kind of reminds me of a 2017 Saints with Alvin Kamara and Mark Ingram. I mean, James Robinson and Travis Etienne can be a Mark Ingram, Alvin Kamara type of a backfield. Like, they have that kind of explosive power. And that's why I'm very excited with the Travis Etienne pick and why I think a lot of you should be excited as well. And you shouldn't consider that a reach. You shouldn't consider that a bad pick. I think that that was, you know, the right pick right there. And judging by how the Jaguars drafted after that pick, you know, they wanted to go offense in the first round to to build that and then, you know, attack the defense and attack the defensive needs later on. And that's, you know, where the fan base gets divided again because, you know, this this fan base can never be happy. It's like, you know, they get the offensive weapon and then they start picking people in the secondary, but they still somehow have a problem with it. And the reason they have a problem with it is, I think, because the Jaguars didn't, you know, try and trade up to get Kyle Pitts, <laughs> and you know, like, that's a move Treep said that they should make, and they didn't do that, but they got another playmaker, and you know, maybe another reason is, you know, they didn't get the Pat Fairmouth, is that how you say his last name, out of Notre Dame, that, uh, they call him Mini Gronk, that guy, you know, and they, they waited to get a tight end until the seventh round, I think, you know, tight end is a position that the Jaguars right now and the Jaguars fans are just clinging on to saying oh we just we don't have it dude it's just like how I look at fantasy football I mean there is not a whole lot of teams that truly have a great to elite tight end and even the teams that do have it like how much of a difference maker does it make besides you know Travis Kelsey but that that whole offense in Kansas City is immaculate. Tyreek Hill, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey. That is that is the offense. But you look at guys like George Kittle. I mean, that average. You look at, like, Darren Waller, the Raiders, super average. I mean, what, like, what does, like, an elite level tight end get you you know what I mean and the Jaguars are already already trying to put Jesus on the field to play tight end and Tim Tebow so the Jaguar fan should already kind of be a little bit more calm and should be really glad that the Jaguars addressed the secondary in the second and third round selections with the selection of Tyson Campbell and Andre Sisco the only pick that I kind of didn't like was the other second round pick in Walker Little, the offensive tackle. I think he's a good player. I just think that this offensive line, um, if you're filling holes, I think it should be at the guard position. Um, Not necessarily to replace Jawan Taylor or Cam Robinson, because these are young guys that you're already invested in. So, I mean, good depth there, sure. That's cool, but, I mean, eh. I wasn't too. I wasn't a big fan of Walker Little, but the Cisco and the Campbell pick, I was a big fan of. Um... You know, you can say what you want about Campbell, but he was probably the most raw and uh, highest ceiling out of all the corners that were still on the board. The Jaguars were not going to take a corner at 25, and, you know, when they did take that corner off the board in the second round, you know, it was going to be, you know, was it going to be Asante Samuel Jr.? Who was it going to be? And it ended up being Campbell. And I like the pick. You know, he's a good tackler. Um, he doesn't have interceptions to his name too much, you know, but he does play the pass very well. Has a lot of pass breakups to his name, though. So, I mean, that's something you got to look at. And something that I just, I think just gets lost on people. And this is, I've been arguing with people on Twitter, like, all fucking draft week about this. Did everybody just, all of a sudden, forget that the secondary was literally the absolute worst worst position group for the Jacksonville Jaguars last year. It was. Point fucking blank. Other than the defensive line, which I think they did a good job in free agency kind of addressing those holes. I mean, Tyson Alu-Alu, if he stayed, would have been, you know, a better 
addition there, and maybe maybe D line is something that you wanted to see early on. They did snag a defensive lineman in the fourth round, but the value wasn't there for those picks, so they had to address you know what either either you consider to be the be- the worst or the second worst position group from last year, and that was the secondary. And they got two guys that you know who may not be the number one on you know the draft boards aka the casuals they got two guys that have that ceiling to be excellent great players in uh, Andre Cisco and Campbell and i think you know you look at it like look at who the jaguars corners were last year that maben guy dude like he was our number one corner last year and we picked him up from a 711 like we got him on discount at a 711 buy one get two buy one slurpee get a second one for fucking free and now you got a secondary that consists of him Shaquille Griffin CJ Henderson uh him Shaquille Griffin CJ Henderson I'm blanking right now Trey Herndon for a little extra depth and oh, I'm blanking there's another one I'm missing too who am I missing I'm missing somebody, but either way, like, it's a way deeper and better position group, and that's the same thing with the safeties as well. I mean, you got uh, Rayshon Jenkins, yeah, I believe, who we got out from the Chargers, and you add Cisco, and you have Jared Wilson back. You know, this is a, you know, building depth. It's like the Jags are just so used to having one to two good guys on the whole team that they fucking explode at the idea of having depth at certain positions and it just blows my mind this was an excellent draft rounds one through four and you know five six seven you know it is what it is there but rounds one through four they hit they hit except for i think the offensive line pick and i know that's kind of contradicting what i'm saying this whole entire time because i mean it could be a death pickup you know whatever but i really really like the way urban meyer attacked this draft this year and i think everybody should there really shouldn't be any reason why you would grade the cisco pick the campbell pick or the etn pick lower than a b other than if you know you have a problem with them as players or potential prospects as how they fit on the team it shouldn't be any lower than a b because they make the team and they make their position group and they make the whole Jacksonville Jaguar organization better and that's true and i would love to see in the comments down below if you disagree i'd love to hear your argument you know and i think Maybe most of the arguments would be the Jags didn't draft a tight end. Okay. Kyle Pitts and that Pat Fairman kid. Like, there's better value to be had. There was better value at other places to add depth to position groups that needed it than to add to to add that. It was just there. It was there. And I and I would disagree that a tight end was more important at the time than drafting ETN or drafting secondary picks. Like it just it what it it wouldn't do it for me, and it it wouldn't convince me if that was your reasoning. But if you do have a low draft grade for the Jacksonville Jaguars, I would love to hear why in the comment section down below. But if I were to give this overall class a grade, I'd give it an A. I would, I would, I really would. It was a solid, solid first uh, draft class for the Urban Meyer era and the Trent Balaki era, and I would love to hear what you guys think about it in the comment section down below. And that was my 2021 Jacksonville Jaguars draft recap. What would you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Dream Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Dream Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Tixley. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel sometimes. People probably outwork me. That's just the way she goes. Alrighty, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.